If you've been thinking about starting a smart home, or if you're well on your way, you may have come across something called Z-Wave. In this video, I'll explain what Z-Wave is, how to set up a Z-Wave network and add devices using Home Assistant, and walk through a range of Z-Wave products to help you decide if it's right for your smart home. I'll look at smart switches, plugs, and various sensors that all use Z-Wave technology. Everything that I cover is also featured in an article on my website. You can find a link to it along with any of the featured tech in the video description. On this channel, I cover how tech can make you more productive. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's do this. Let's first talk about what Z-Wave is. Z-Wave is a wireless mesh protocol designed for home automation. The benefits of Z-Wave include low power consumption, excellent range, interoperability, and less interference. Z-Wave devices operate in the sub one gigahertz band, making them impervious to interference from Wi-Fi and other wireless technologies in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum like Bluetooth and Zigbee. A Z-Wave network consists of a controller or hub, which allows Z-Wave devices to join the network and acts as a bridge to your home network. Z-Wave devices include things like smart locks, thermostats, window shades, switches, plugs, sensors, and much more. To get started with Z-Wave, you'll need a Z-Wave controller. I have the Zeus USB 700 series ZST-10 and the Zeus 800 series ZST-39 long range. These are little USB sticks that you plug into the computer such as a mini PC or Raspberry Pi, running your home automation server, which in my case is Home Assistant. For the best results, you'll want to use a USB extension cord to keep the controller away from your other networking equipment. The 800 series is the newer version of the two and has a long range radio for communicating with devices up to one mile away, but that's in an open space. However, the Z-Wave long range on that device is only supported in the US since the frequency actually varies by country. Adding a device to your Z-Wave network is pretty easy. First, you must put the controller into inclusion mode, which tells it to search for devices trying to join the network. Then you'll put the device you want to add into pairing mode, for example, by pressing a button on the device three times. The controller will then find the device, ask you for a pin code printed on that device. This ensures a random device cannot join your Z-Wave network. After you enter that pin code, the controller will interview the device and display a confirmation message that it was added successfully. If you encounter an error, or if it says the device was not added securely, try excluding the device and then re-adding it. To exclude a device, Choose Remove Device from the controller software, and then put the device into exclusion mode, perhaps by triple pressing the same button you use when pairing. To illustrate just how good the range is, I'll walk from my Z-Wave controller to one of my connected Z-Wave devices. The controller is located in my basement, and the device is located in an outdoor shed on the far corner of our property. The shed even has a radiant barrier to keep the interior more comfortable during extreme weather, but that barrier also reduces Wi-Fi signal significantly. Well, despite that and the distance, the device had no issue joining and staying connected to my Z-Wave network. Let's take a look at several Z-Wave devices that I'm using in my smart home from a company called Zeus. Some of these products I bought myself and some were sent to me by Zeus for testing, but they're not sponsoring this video. First up is a device that my family relies on every day, the Zeus Zen32 Scene Controller. This is one of the most versatile smart home devices that I've ever used. The Zen32 is a smart wall switch with five buttons, a large one at the top for controlling a resistive load up to 15 amps, or a small fan under three amps, or up to 150 watts of LED lights. Beneath the large button are four smaller buttons, and each button can be programmed to trigger seven different actions. 
These buttons have remote control functionality and are not connected directly to a load. You can also leave the load terminal empty and use that main button on top for remote control only. Combined, these five buttons allow you to control up to 35 different automations or devices, which is wild. Each button has a programmable LED indicator, meaning they can be used to indicate something like a garage door being left open at night. You can wire the scene controller as a single pull or as a three-way switch. I bought five of these switches for our home. The top button on each controls the ceiling fan in that room. We can press once to toggle the fan on and off, double tap to reduce the fan speed, or long press until the LED flashes to increase the fan speed. In each room, I use the top left button to toggle the ceiling fan light on and off, and the top right button to toggle the main lights in the room on and off. The action of the bottom two buttons varies by room. In my kids' room, we can triple press the bottom left button to activate a get ready for sleep scene, which sets a lamp to a soft purple and plays a sleep sounds playlist to help my kids calm down and relax. A single press of this button puts the room into sleep mode, turns off all lights, and turns on a white noise machine and a baby monitor. And the double press turns off that sleep mode. For fun, a single press on the bottom right starts a dance party automation, and a double tap will turn it off. The possibilities are really endless, and your only problem will be remembering what all the button combinations can do. You may have several electronics in your home that you wish you could control wirelessly, but they're technically not smart devices. Or you might be curious how much electricity they're using. If so, then the Zeus Zen 20 power strip might be a good fit for you. It has five outlets and two USB ports. You can turn power on and off for all seven independently and track the energy used by each connected device. The power strip also acts as a Z-Wave range extender, giving your Z-Wave mesh network a boost. In the event of a power outage, each outlet will remember and restore the on-off status of each connected device. The power strip is helpful for controlling the on-off function or for monitoring the power consumption of devices like lamps, TVs, gaming consoles, printers, etc. Just know the total amperage on load for the entire strip should not exceed 15 amps, so don't use it with things like washers, refrigerators, or electric heaters. The power strip does have overload protection and will shut off if the total power draw exceeds 1800 watts. This device could be helpful for a home office to control and track the energy of a computer, monitor, printer, docking station, and lights, or you could use it in an entertainment setup with a TV, gaming console, speakers, receiver, and more. Just remember this power strip is for indoor use only. If you're looking for an outdoor solution, there is also the Zeus Zen 05 outdoor plug. It features an IP65 rated weatherproof housing and an outlet cover when not in use. The plug is angled, allowing you to fit two plugs in a single receptacle. Its cable is intentionally short to keep it off the ground away from any pooling water. Like the power strip, the outdoor plug adds wireless control to devices and lights. You could use this to create automations for turning outdoor string lights on and off at sunrise, at sunset and sunrise respectively, or when motion is detected or not. Likewise, it's a great solution for automating outdoor holiday lights like at Christmas time. Other way that I'm using this is to monitor the electricity consumption of the huge batteries for my electric lawnmower, string trimmer, and other power tools. If you're interested in tracking the indoor or outdoor temperature and humidity, you could use the Zeus ZSE55 Temperature Humidity XS sensor. The sensor has a small, lightweight, and discreet design. You can just toss it on a shelf or install it outdoors with a dedicated bracket. There are tons of ways to use a sensor like this. 
You can create an automation to adjust the thermostat based on the temperature in a certain room, or to turn on a ceiling fan when the room's temperature exceeds a certain level. You could also start or stop a connected humidifier based on a room's humidity level. This could be especially useful during colder months when humidity levels tend to drop, which leads to dry skin. Or you could just use it to get insight into the comfort of your home. If you're looking for greater peace of mind about your home's safety, you might consider the Zeus Zen 55 DC signal sensor. This device converts your existing analog smoke and carbon monoxide detectors into smart alert devices. For it to work though, you must have interconnected mains power detectors. It's not for battery power detectors. And no matter how many detectors are in your interconnected system, you only need one Zen 55 device. It can send you an alert if you are away from home and a smoke or seal alarm goes off, and it's even able to distinguish between the two types of alerts. This is honestly such a cool device. I actually have a whole separate video on it if you want to learn more, including how to install and configure it with your smart home. Well, that's a look at Z-Wave technology, including how to use it in Home Assistant and five types of Z-Wave devices plus a controller that you might want to consider for a smart home that prioritizes local control. Let me know in the comments what Z-Wave devices you're using and what your experience has been with Z-Wave. I'll leave links to my video on the Zen 55 DC signal sensor for smoke and seal alerts and to another video on my favorite smart lock with Z-Wave. There are also links in the description for all the featured tech in this video. I appreciate when you use those links since I may earn a small commission at no additional cost to you. If you're interested in supporting this channel, consider becoming a member using the links in the description or picking up merch like this shirt. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay family, I'm gonna show you how to use this new smart switch. Press the big button on top to turn the fan on and off or just double tap it to turn the fan speed down or long press it to turn the fan speed up, okay? Then this button controls that light over there and this one controls that light over there or you can uh, double press them to get different fun party colors on the lights. You can also triple tap the buttons to start the robot vacuum, press four times to close the garage door, and press five times to arm the alarm system. If you press that button once, it will turn the TV on and off, and that button will make an announcement that dinner is ready. You can long press either of the buttons to turn on and off all the lights in the house, and if you double tap this one, hey, hun, where are you going? What, was it something I said?